I wanted to talk a little bit about the server config file. It's a pretty important file when setting up your server for the first time. Um, it can be located in your 7 days guide dedicated, dedicated server, server folder. Um, if, if you're like me, you also have to get the game installed too. You don't want to go to this one because that's not going to help you out when you're talking about your dedicated server. So you want to go to this one and it's sitting right there. Um, the thing is, is it's an XML file which means Windows does not have really a default editor for it. So when you first double click it, it comes up to Internet Explorer and although it's pretty easy to read, you can't do anything with it. You can't edit it, you can't change anything. So um, first thing you want to do is you want to realize that you can edit it with any kind of text editor. Now Windows does come with Notepad. So you would right click the file, open with, and choose Notepad. The thing here though is it's super ugly and it's hard to read, um, but kind of give you a rundown. Here's your server port, here's your game name, this is where you set your game password. Uh, my game password is usually ha ha yeah not, nice try. Um, let's try put nice try though. That's this way uh, if somebody tries to join my server they'll need nice try as a password. Um, I changed my game host to Guppy's server. Uh, my my server description by Guppy. Uh, seven days of die server by Guppy. Um, you change this Navis gain part to random gen, but see, I don't want to do it this way because this is really ugly. And this is why you need to download Notepad++. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. Now it's a whole lot prettier. Um, I have nice colors and it's broken down a little bit more, so it's a whole lot easier to read. Everything's lined up, so because it's a true, uh, I guess, IDE for. Uh, you know, XML files and text files and whatnot, but it just makes things a whole lot easier to read and also to find errors because you, you see everything here is red, so you know it's supposed to be red. So if something changes, you know, you see a blue in there, it's really easy to spot. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and change this to Notepad. So the server port again, my game host, I'm going to call it again Guppy Server. Um, let's see, by player count, let's see, it's a 7 days of die server by Guppyker. I assume that shows up in the server description. Um, nav is gain or random gen, those are my two options. So I'm going to change that to random gen. Now, you might want to say random gen, random gem with, a, with an M, and it's not going to work. So you would definitely look over here and see um, how it's supposed to be. So you want to go ahead and copy the, these options over here. The game name, this is the one that controls the seed, so this is the most important one. So I choose Guppy Server, because it has a nice balance of pretty much everything in a lot of cities, and I like it. Game difficulty, zero is easiest, five the hardest, so the default is two. Game mode, survival, and P, just leave that one alone. Um, zombies run, zero, one, or two. Um, build, create, false, this is for creative mode, you can change that to true. Um, if you want to have, you know, creative mode enabled server where everybody has access to the creative menu. Your day and night length. And th the best thing about the server config file is you can go beyond the defaults up that the menu has. Because you know how when you set up a game for the first time, you can have all those nice menu options? Um, the thing is, is those are limited to just the default options. Whereas here we can actually change things. I can change it to a 51 minute day and night length if I wanted to. Um, the other important parts in here are the this thing right here. This password right here, this Telnet password, we're going to go ahead and change that to, uh, let's see, password. Because that's going to be important for your server manager. Um, change, when, change me is also going to be password. I don't know the difference between control panel and Telnet. I thought one was web and one was Telnet, but this, uh, so I guess this is for the web page. So I don't know the difference. I just change them both to password and call it a day. I guess you can access the server to um, through the web if you set this to true. But I don't I don't want to do that. I don't want to access the server through the web. So I'm going to leave that alone. Control Z that to false. So this is the one that's important. This Telnet one because this is the one that server managers mostly use. Um, drop on death is my favorite option. This is what I'm talking about when you have more control in the server config file. Because the options are zero for everything, one for two belt, two for backpack, or three for delete all. There's a hidden option, four, and it means drop nothing. So I could actually change this for one or two. 
but this is just comments so changing this absolutely does nothing for your server anything in green is just comments but basically kind of reminds me hey to forest for drop nothing drop on quit you have an option for nothing I don't know why you don't have a drop on death option for nothing but they do actually have one it's just hidden so this is where you save your server config settings and then set up your game and you know kind of look it through it and see and you know, change it to how you like. Oh, airdrop marker. I'm going to change that to true. This way the airdrops show up on the map. Uh, airdrop frequency. Yes, every three days. Let's make it every day. Uh, max spawn zombies. Let's change that to 160. Really crank things up. Now this is going to be problematic for you if you don't have a robust server. Um, making this number too large, more than about 80, may cause servers to run at poor frame rates, which affect lag, blah, blah, blah. Uh, max bomb animals you can change those up you can change this to e ESC enabled or ESC disabled I do not like EAC it is wasted so um, I just keep it off but now I'm ready to run a server day to die server password oh yeah my my server password server password is going to be uh, password uh, let's see you can change the port server is public you want it to re register the master server so I don't want them to run at all ever, so I'm going to change it to never run. Now I know there's going to be more options coming up in A16 when they add for the run in daylight and run versus torchlight and all that crazy stuff, but I'm not worried about that. So I would save it and then I would exit it and then I would actually have my server config ready.